Today we're finally back with another community member gameplay review, and I'm gonna go over exactly how you can go about submitting gameplay here in a second, but overall, my whole goal with this series is really to break down gameplay that probably looks a little bit more similar to yours. Now, we're gonna be taking a look at things that they do well, areas they can improve upon, and specific mistakes that they make throughout the gameplay. Now, in order to submit your gameplay, make sure you join the Discord. The full instructions are down in the comments below. Let's get into it. So let's quickly go over whose gameplay we are actually taking a look at today. We are taking a look at a solo game by Tater Todd here. His lifetime KD is a 0.8, but he only has about 120 matches played. His last seven days is around a 1.09, so slightly above average here. The average rebirth KD right now is around a 0.97. In terms of his strengths, he says his strengths are centering, accuracy, and confidence, and his weaknesses are going to be minimap awareness, map knowledge, deliberate movement, which I took as, you know, jumping while shooting, strafing, deliberate stuff in engagements that's going to allow him to take less damage, and then rotations. And then in terms of area, he wants to improve it's going to be early game and becoming more consistent so let's go ahead and take a look at the gameplay here so as i mentioned we're going to be taking a look at things that he does well areas that he can improve upon and specific mistakes that he makes throughout this gameplay now you know the first thing that i do want to point out is that he is on console so we do want to keep that in mind just a reminder three tips for my console players a little bit higher sensitivity so that you can play a little bit snappier, which he does throughout this game. I'll kind of point it out for you. The second is going to be keep your distance when fighting people. Try to stay outside of that five meter range where you can really get your camera broken. And the last one is to keep information, audio cues, minimap pings, UAVs up. And that's going to give you the advantage of knowing where people are and will allow you to better approach fights. Now, he's going to grab the bounty for cash flow, which is a good move right there. And he sees this one out here. And we're going to notice that, look, the aim's a little bit all over the place with that first fight and the real issue there is and i i say with his first fight because i know that he cleans it up throughout this gameplay the problem there is you give your opponent an enemy to get away to reposition to replay it up and then re-engage you versus being in a situation where you absolutely smoke that guy, and that person has no chance to escape at all. It's a pretty free and easy kill. So he's going to go ahead and keep looting here. He almost has enough for loadout, and then he's going to go ahead and buy loadout. And he is in solo, so we're going to be taking a look at a lot of how he approaches certain gunfights, out, how he approaches his 1v1s, and whether he puts himself in a 50-50 situation or he's able to avoid it by hitting shots. Now, right here, he needs to immediately go buy, buy loadout. He's got plenty of cash. He's not totally sure where anybody is. Go get your loadout down. Do not risk being shot in the back in some fluke situation, and then you lose out on loadout. You lose out on cash. So he is being a little bit more cautious here, which is okay, but I don't hear anything. So I want to immediately go get loadout, and I'd probably throw it a little bit further back here, kind of towards this building right here. He also has a Deddy that he just ran right by you can kind of see how he's kind of playing a little bit snappy he's checking around he actually does have good centering especially for a console player he centers his crosshairs throughout this gameplay very well so let's go to grab loading and he is going to drop over 10 kills i'll tell you that much i'm not going to tell you exactly how many he drops here we're going to keep you on the edge of your seat but he does drop over 10 kills in this gameplay by the way in terms of lobby strength he was one of the top players in this lobby i think he was top five so this is an, an example of him capitalizing on the fact that he was in a lobby where he is one of the better players. Now, as he pushes up here, he's going to hear one right above. And I want to talk about this situation in particular because instead of just going, he plays this a little bit slow. Now, there's kind of two things that I want to point out here. The first is that you should go here. The moment you see this guy and you notice that he's kind of... He has his back towards you and he's looking down. Go challenge this guy. Don't slow peek this because right there you give him the opportunity. At this moment right here because he didn't capitalize on this opportunity to go challenge him, he is now at a disadvantage. Now he ends up winning that fight, which is fine. And now I want to talk about this situation. He has no reason to panic here. He has no reason to play scared. He didn't take that much damage. He only took a little over a plate of damage. He does not need to push all the way back down this way to replay. He completely took himself out. All he had to do was go sit in another room. Yes, I'd be repositioning. I'd probably go to the other building next door. You know, he was in this little supply run building. I would have pushed over to bounty building. But all he has to do there is replay, and he is back in a very good position. Now, he, there's a decoy there, which, you know, it is what it is. He's going to go clear it. That's fine. But going back to what I was saying, you do want to be repositioning when you get a kill right there. You are using Vanguard guns. They are unsilenced, which means you are a very susceptible to being third party. Just keep that in mind that if you, especially as a 4KD player, I am looking for minimap pings 
from weapons being shot. So when I see that somebody's in a fight, when I see that somebody's shooting, I'm more inclined to go over and push that, at which point if you're still sitting in the same spot, that's a pretty free and easy kill for me. So just keep that in mind. Now he sees one right here. He's able to get the thirst right there. That guy didn't have much health, so we'll take it. He's got a very healthy lobby here. He's got three kills. He's got 31 other players still alive. And what you see is that in these lobbies that aren't as good, you know, the lobbies do stay very he healthy. Now, very good play there, getting that UAV up, understanding where people are. Now, he sees one right above. And remember what I told you about the guy that was in the bathroom in this building over in living quarters about... You know, Tater not playing aggressive enough, same exact situation right here. And I think a lot of you struggle with this. And I don't know if it's a lack of confidence, maybe. I don't, I'm not totally sure exactly what your thought process is, but notice that he's gonna ping. This guy's gonna be on his level. Now, as a 4KD player, I'm immediately going to challenge this. I'm immediately going, I'm gonna slide cancel around this corner, I'm gonna center my crosshairs, I'm gonna push this guy, and I'm gonna get this free and easy kill because I know exactly where this guy is. And this guy doesn't know where I am. Instead, he's going to play it a little bit slower. Now, he's going to end up getting this kill. He hears him to the right. But you can see the hesitation in challenging this guy. Even though Tater has the full advantage here, he, there's hesitation. He goes ahead and hits his shots. That's where I said I wasn't too concerned about his aim. Yes, it could use a little bit of tightening up. He could be a little bit more precise. And specifically, just to kind of show you here, let's slow this down. Specifically, upper torso. When I talk about hitting upper torso shots, that's the, you know, the the chest, the neck, the head. This is what a lot of you do. A lot of you are centered around this area where it's the the butt, the the hips, the stomach, which are kind of lower damage areas. So we do want to be trying to focus on hitting those upper torso shots. That's going to make that TTK even faster. So he's got four kills. He's on a pretty good game here. He's got 29 other players still, still alive. And obviously we see one flying in. And notice this right here, this guy flying in. This is a quick solos tip for you. This guy's flying back in, so I know exactly where he's actually going to be pushing. So he just landed right up here. He just landed, or he's landing right now somewhere by Gondola. So use that to your advantage, especially in solos. And so far, you know, in terms of why his enemies haven't shot back, he's just been a good in a good position, and he's executed well with his aim. He has. Now, mini-map picks, right? So I see a guy. Yup, he executes on that. That's where you want to be using information to your advantage. Now, he's trying to get out, and he hits those shots well with the MP40. You know, the MP40 is good at that range, but that's where we go back, and he misses just a few bullets, just a few shots, whereas if he hits all of these shots here, he is able to get that kill. That is a guy that he should be able to, he can kill. It's not like the guy would have escaped if he hit all of his shots. No, he missed a few shots there. And that's what allows this guy to now reposition up top. And this is the guy that ends up killing you. He dead slides right there. His movement was, he got stuck in his dead slide when slide canceling. But if you go all the way back, he misses shots on that guy. And he ends up getting killed by that guy. That's just something where, that's a great example of how you need to execute. And because of the fact that he missed shots, he ends up dying there. So, let's go ahead and bring him back in here. He's going to fly back in. And we're going to see what he does upon returning. Now, what what's my thought process right here? My thought process is, uh, Lodi looks pretty clear. I'm okay with floating here. You don't want to float too long, though, because you are very susceptible to being sniped out of the air. Again, as a 4KD player, I if I ever had a sniper, you know, which I don't run very often, but I am looking for people to easily snipe out of the air. Those are free kills right there. But right here, I would go get Lodi. Uh, right here, you know, you're in a bad spot. Here's why. Now, in order to get loadout, you have to push back out into the open. Instead of capitalizing on quickly grabbing loadout upon flying back in, you now have to rotate all the way over there, which leaves you susceptible to being shot. Leaves you susceptible to teams up at headquarters, which, by the way, if you caught the minimap earlier, there are people headquarters. So, that's just a quick tip. Like, I'm not going to full send loadout, but I do want to... I do want to land back on it if I can. It's the quickest way to go about getting loadout. Guy right there, notice the shots. That guy does not have an opportunity to rotate up the stairs to really move at all because he hits all of his shots there and mixes in headshots, and he gets that easy kill right there. Now, notice how fast the lobby died, right? Five kills. He was at three kills with 29 other players. Now he's at five kills with only 19. So he sees one right there. This is where I talk about really challenging when you have the advantage now he loses track of this guy 
And right here, the thing to highlight in this situation is no information. Now, there's not a ton of information that he can act upon. He knows there's somebody around here, but he can't get a UAV up. He, you know, there's mini map pings all around. So I start to try to rotate into the action a little bit. But look, it's a comfort factor. I understand that a lot of players that are looking to improve aren't totally comfortable consistently putting themselves in engagements. Or, you know, in this scenario, I probably would rotate and just call this for lack of a better term, call this a spade a spade. You know, let, let, let I don't know where this guy is. Just let him roll and then go ahead and push up and start to get information again in terms of mini-map ping. Start to act on the information that you have, which is people shooting up towards prison. Now, as he rotates up here, let's see what he does. You hear one to your right. I definitely heard one in Grandma's house, for sure. And look, I would go. I'd go challenge that. You know one's in there. You can be smart about it. He has enough ammo and enough plates to challenge this. One down low. Good shots right there. Again, notice how he, because he hits shots, he wins that 50-50. Took a little bit more damage than he would have liked. But at the end of the day, nope, go against. Yep, satchel. You need the satchel. Yep. And now he's good to go. Now he's fully back, right? Now you're fully back in terms of he's got full plates. He's got good cash flow again. He's got enough money for a UAV now because he gets the bounty poached. You know, quick little bonus tip there. Grab contracts. Even if you have no intent of completing a bounty contract. You could be an average player looking to improve. You grab bounty. You have no intention of actively pushing that bounty to go kill them. But at the end of the day, if they get poached, it is cash flow for you. And you can really capitalize on that. And that goes for anybody. That could be a 2KD, a 3KD player. You don't necessarily have to go push your bounty. Your bounty could be all the way across the map in bio. But at the end of the day, if it gets poached, that's cash. Now, I don't hear anything around him. So he should be going to get a UAV. And I believe he actually does go here to get a UAV. Does he not get a UAV? He doesn't. So that's kind of a mistake on his end is not getting a UAV right there. That's going to give him everything he needs to know. If you've been here before, if you've been around here for a while, you know that. By the way, if you are looking to get better rebirth, just consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I'm a 4K player. I do videos every single day. Good shots there. He wins that 50-50. He missed a few, but still able to win that 50-50 fight right there. I'm a 4KD player. I do videos every single day. So if you are looking to get better rebirth, just consider hitting that subscribe button down below. One down below. Good shots again. Good shots again. And he's missing pro he's missing a few bullets, which is why he isn't getting clean kills. You know, that is why he's taking some damage is because he's not getting the cleanest kills possible. He's missing a few shots throughout, which is what's what's really allowing him to take it, take damage. One sliding there. And he just notice he gets caught with his crosshairs out here. Not out, not out. Right here. Notice that's where he takes damage. This is where he takes damage right here. That's where he takes damage. And then as he peeks the corner, he's able to get that kill. But he takes damage in that initial situation because he's getting caught with his crosshairs not out. That's what I always talk about. You want to be strategic about having your crosshairs out whenever you are challenging somebody and not getting caught in attack sprint. He's able to recover okay, which is perfectly, uh, which he played well, and he's able to get that kill. But again, notice we always talk about the basis for starting to 1v2, 1v3, and 1v4 is getting clean kills. You know, if there's another teammate there, he ends up probably going down in that situation. Now, here's one below. Nine kills with eight other players still up. So, he's in a good spot. Let's see what he does. He needs plates. He didn't loot that guy, did he? I don't think he did. He definitely should have. Just to see if he has plates. Good job there. Can you fall? Yes, you can. Go buy UAV. I believe he buys a UAV in this situation. And he's notice how, how he's playing a little bit snappy. He's he's he plays on higher sense, from what I can tell. Just from my initial initial gut instinct, is he plays on a higher sense. Now he ends up getting shot in the back, but right here, notice that he doesn't have any plates. So the mistake that he made at the buy station was not buying plates. He would have been in a really good spot. Now he sees one below. He ends up auto-mantling out, which I don't think he wanted to do. But he notices one on his level. And right here, you have to be very careful. You have to be very... I want to pull that back just for a split second. Because in this moment right here, you are very susceptible to this person who is on his level. You know, that's who he's susceptible to being shot by. And he has no cover because he, he has cover from this one. But he does not have cover from this second guy, which is where he's... You know, he could potentially die from. So he's going to go ahead and push in here. He's got to find a way to get this kill. This kill is going to give him plates. He gets a plate right there. 
one outside. He, and now he's full plates again. So now he's in a good spot to challenge. Are you in? I immediately wait. Let me see what I do here. I go challenge this guy. This is the guy I'm going to challenge right now. Why? Because at the end of the day, once I get this kill, which I still know he's over here, I'm going to try to get this kill while I still have the UAV up. The moment I get this kill, I can hold this one out of circle. So start thinking ahead. Don't think a small picture. You know, I can get this kill right here. It's so free. Think about this kill, and then you just take this free one right here. Let's see how he plays it. Definitely want to push, though. And I think he just, I think, I think he just lacks a little bit of confidence. You know, I can see that he wants to put himself in the fights. I think he just either doesn't know how to totally approach them. He goes for these flanks a lot of times. That's what I can also see, is he looks to flank enemies instead of challenging them head on, which look, it's okay to flank. It's just, it takes a lot of time. And if you anticipate well and you keep that information up, then it's very easy to challenge people kind of head on, essentially. Now, he's got 1,600. He definitely needs to go by plates. By the way, notice how because he didn't act quick enough on those two dots that I specifically highlighted, he ended up not getting either of those kills, which is unfortunate. But that, those are the situations where you play just a little bit slow. Guy right there, boom, he's able to get that kill. And he's able to get that kill because he hit shots. That He was low plates right there, and he's able to win that 50-50. You got to buy plates. So remember how I just mentioned he goes for the flank a lot of time? He goes for the flank again here. He sees the one pushing, and he does a good job of using that cover to his advantage. But he ends up pushing all the way around, and he pushes into gas with no gas mask. Now, he probably should have bought a gas mask, yes. He's able to get this kill, and then he's kind of stuck in a weird spot. It's a 1v1, by the way. This lobby got smoked in this endgame. It's a 1v1. He's got 11 kills. He's got the opportunity for the win. He's going to see this guy pushing up. And we're going to talk about this endgame. What do you think? Does he get the win here? Talk, let's break it down. Let's break it down. I know the answer, but I'm still going to break it down. Okay, so circle pushes up top. So right here, where's your high ground? Where's your cover? The answer to your high ground is right here. You know that he's on roof. You saw him fly into roof, so you know he's up there. And you should be able to take ladder, and then you have cover up on roof, and you should be able to challenge that guy. He ends up staying low, which is okay. It just puts him in a tougher spot. You gotta. Ch you don't want to be rotating on the edge of gas here. I hear him. He's up above. He's right up above him. And at this point, I'd rotate this early. I'd rotate this early. There's no... You don't have a gas mask. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And he got caught down below. Yeah, and he gets caught down below here. He does not have a stim. So he's just going to end up missing. So I hope you found today's video helpful. The solution to that would have been to rotate top of Decon a little bit earlier. He would have been in a much better spot to challenge that guy one-on-one, -on -one, especially since he already knew that he was up there. So I hope you found today's video helpful. As I always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.